Since this is our final episode, we're gonna do something a little bit differently today. This entire hour, it's a special hour, and it's about change. And what must never change about the accountability function of journalism. You keep using the horn. I don't know think it means what you think it means. You know, the thing about TV is that it's ephemeral, right? It's fleeting. It evaporates up into the air. A lot of it is not even meant to be, uh, uh, a lot of it's not even meant to be remembered. Well, no shit. But this program transcended that. It's a part of journalism school curriculum. Teachers use segments from this show all the time in classrooms, in lessons, guiding and teaching the next generation. It's over. We are screwed. We're gonna fry some taters, but first this quick message from this video's sponsor, FlipCityMag.com. Excuse me folks, we'll get right back into the video, but first I gotta show you something that I've been super excited to get in the mail, and it finally arrived. Flip City Magazine. I cannot tell you how excited I was to get a real printed magazine in the mail that I actually wanted to read. Not the spam junk that I'm typically used to getting, but something that's actually entertaining. Remember the old American tradition of mocking bad ideas and laughing at them? That's exactly what Flip City is. A satirical magazine for the culture wars. You all know my sense of humor, and I think you'll really enjoy this hilarious, 100% independent, uncensored platform. And let me tell you, they do not pull punches on this thing. I swear, when they say it's an uncensored, free speech platform, they mean it. We're all fighting the culture wars. Flip City Magazine does it with art and comedy. Seriously, folks, go ahead and check this out. It's hilarious, and it's genuinely nice to get a real printed magazine in the mail that you actually want to read. And enjoy reading it without having to stare at a computer screen. Flip City Magazine wants you to laugh while it's still legal. So subscribe at flipcitymag.com or just click the link in the description below. Hey everyone, welcome back to Brian Stelter's final gaslighting of this country. Maybe. Since this is our final episode, we're gonna do something a little bit differently today. This entire hour, it's a special hour, and it's about change. And what must never change about the accountability function of journalism. What, you're finished? Well, allow me to retort. But nothing you do is about accountability outside of your endless demonizing of Fox News and Republicans. And don't get me wrong, both of these groups deserve scrutiny, criticism, and accountability. However, there is another party that's been controlling the country for two years and lots of other media organizations that need to be held accountable. But when people try to hold those groups accountable, you call them conspiracy theorists and far-right fanatics. Specifically, so that when people do hear their criticisms, they're dismissed. Stealth and his cohorts aren't at all interested in holding their party accountable. That's exactly why Brian Stelter and his cohorts spend so much time justifying their brazenly partisan coverage by accusing the other side of being an incoming earth-destroying meteor that must be stopped at all costs. I mean, Hunter Biden, at that point, Hunter Biden literally could have had, had the corpses of children in his basement. I would not have cared. Now that's not, that doesn't answer the people who say it's still completely unfair to not have looked at the laptop in a timely way and to have shut down the you know the new york post's twitter account like that that's a, just a conspiracy that's a left-wing conspiracy to deny the presidency to donald trump absolutely it was absolutely right but i think it was warranted right no that's exactly why supposed genius experts like sam harris think democracy can only be saved with an authoritarian takeover by his party you know the thing about tv is that it's ephemeral right it's fleeting it evaporates up into the air. A lot of it is not even meant to be, uh, uh, a lot of it's not even meant to be remembered. Exactly, they pick and choose what they want you to remember. They want you to remember January 6th, and from now until election day, we'll be constantly repeating the lie that Republicans are dangerous election deniers. They don't want you to remember about all those times that got stories wrong in attacks on their political opponents, or all the times they spread disinformation and rhetoric that led directly to violence, or the time that Brian Stelter encouraged a now convicted felon to run for office. But this program transcended that. It's a part of journalism school curriculum. Teachers use segments from this show all the time in classrooms, in lessons, guiding and teaching the next generation. And this is exactly why journalism is dead and has been redefined to using any and all means to keep the Democrat party in power. Here's what I do know. I know it's not partisan to stand up for decency and democracy. Dialogue, it's not partisan to stand up to demagogues. It's required, it's patriotic. 
we must make sure that we don't give platforms to those who are lying to our faces. <laughs> is it just me or is he making an argument for why he was fired in the first place? His entire spiel is that CNN is abandoning democracy because they fired him. The guy who doesn't want to hold the party in power or their media accountable. He's absolutely right though. Standing up to demagogues and holding power to account is an important job which is why you no longer have one. What's even more disturbing are the bot-like shows of support that he's gotten from supposed newsrooms all over the country. It's crazy. All of these people think keeping Democrats and their beliefs in power at all costs is journalism. All right, folks, that's it for that one. Thanks for watching. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Then leave a comment to help the algorithm invent some frustrations. Thanks a lot.